Richard Fine fought corruption and he was imprisoned for 18 months as a result of judicial retaliation. He never backed down, fought to the end. In this lecture, he explains how to fight corruption and these lessons apply to your corner of the country. Welcome to PA Voter Information Network. This is Larry DiMarco, your host. Do you watch my YouTube channel but haven't subscribed yet? Why not now? It's easy and free. Just click the red button and the bell right beside it and you will be notified of all new content. This is the last of a five-part series. In part one, we learned that Richard Fine saved taxpayers over a billion dollars by fighting government corruption. In part two, he uncovered a judicial bribery scandal of epic proportions. In part three, Richard Fine discussed his imprisonment for contempt, a judicial retaliation. In part four, he discussed his release and lawmakers' response to his efforts, which was the legalization of the judicial bribery scandal in California. In this episode, Richard Fine will tell you how to break the chains of corruption. Now, what can you do? If you run into a judge who is sitting on your case, and your case has anything whatsoever to do with the county that is making these payments, you just say to the judge, Judge, do you have anything you have to tell me? The judge says, no. He says, Judge, getting payments from the county? The judge says, yes. Well, Judge, you know, under... Canon 3E2, you have to disclose anything that might be relevant to this case, whether you think it's relevant or not. You say, well, and, say, and judge, under 3E1, you have to disqualify yourself if you're violating the law. And under Code of Civil Procedure Section 170.1A, Six and I, 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 those are three small I's, you're disqualified if a reasonable person thinks that you can't be objective. So, judge, you're out. Get out of my case. <laughs> now, another thing is that if you have a case against the county, or the county was involved even as a witness, and any one of these judges who did this was sitting on that case, under California Code of Civil Procedure 473D, you bring a motion to void out his decision. And that motion can be brought at any time because the judge committed fraud upon the court. And he was disqualified from the very beginning. And there's a case called Rusko that holds that. But how are we going to clean up the system? And I'm speaking to you now as a political body. You go in to your board of supervisors and you say, cut out the payments. And then you go in and the same time you say, pass the ordinance that any judge who's received these payments or receiving them can't sit as a judge in this county. And they say, well, we can't do that because the state controls the judges. You say, yes, you can because you can stop them from sitting in your county. They can go sit somewhere else. Send them to another county. But if you do this in all the counties, these judges are out. Now, we may be sitting with some lame duck <laughs> judges who have no place to sit, but that's okay too because then the pressure is going to be on them to resign. So that is where we are. We're at. And that's how you skin the cat when somebody is controlling the system. See, they think that they have the system under control. Because I'm going to leave you with a couple of things here. With respect to impeachment, because you say, well, we can, you know, we could impeach the judges. Out of the 31,500 state court judges in the United States from the history of the time that you've had state court judges, not one of them has ever been impeached. Now, 19, 39 states elect judges. You know, the, uh, and those judges basically win because nobody runs against them. 
in California, if nobody registers to run against a judge, the judge automatically is put in. Many states have laws that say that the legislature can remove a judge. Judges have never been removed by the legislature. In the federal system, 17 judges have been impeached. Three of them resigned before they were voted out by the Senate, and 14 have actually been voted out. Now, on federal judges who have accepted, shall we say, illegal payments, the most recent impeachment came with the judge in New Orleans who took uh, illegal money from people that were in front of him. That's the same situation with federal judges that are sitting here who've taken money from L.A. County or some of the other counties. Nobody has gone after them, and chances are that these judges haven't even disclosed it during their hearings. Now, one of the things that you can do if you're in front of a federal judge is you can go in and you can get the federal judge's financial reports. If you go to the federal system to get it, it's going to take you a couple of weeks. If you go to Judicial Watch's website, these financial reports are published. So you can go in and you can find out. So if you're in front of a federal judge, you just go to Judicial Watch's website, you plug in the judge's name, and you'll find out the financial report of the federal judges. So that's where we are sitting at. This is your battle. Now, today's new world social media doesn't cost anything to do a lot of this stuff. So the days of putting in a lot of money are over because you can take what I told you today, particularly these things about going to the Board of Supervisors on these two parts, get it out there in the social media, get your people together, go into that Board of Supervisors, no cost. Obama won both of his elections by the use of social media, by the use of the social media to go in and get the vote out. So why not us? Why are we sitting around and not using social media? People don't talk about it on our site. In fact, you can't even talk about it on our site. You talk about it on social media. Brilliant. That is what you can do. That there is an agreement between the judges and the Board of Supervisors. Because in Los Angeles, the Board of Supervisors' pay is connected to the compensation of the judges. So therefore, if the Board of Supervisors gives money to the judges, which is compensation, they raise their own salaries. So it was one hand feeding the other, screwing the public. So basically, the one resistance that you're going to get is that if the other counties have the same thing, that means that when they give the judges more money, they're raising their own salaries without telling the public. Now, that is what is happening. That is the tragedy that is occurring, and that is because of the bribes. Because remember, the money is a bribe. Never doubt that a small group of educated, dedicated people can change the world. Indeed, that is the only way that it has happened. I hope you've been inspired by attorney Richard Fine like I have. Now, he lives in LA County, California, and he found corruption. But a sociology professor once said, if you have corruption in one location, and you study another location with similar conditions, similar environment, and similar factors, you might si find similar corruption. Corruption's not unique to LA County of California, but plagues our governments across the country. In this episode, he gave a blueprint on how to fight corruption with the use of legal motions to recuse, impeachment, pressure on county commissioners, and social media to illustrate the power of people, activism, and voters. A judge was recalled in California this year after issuing a ruling from the bench. As Richard says in this episode, the time of spending a lot of money is over. Things can go viral on social media and the internet for free. 
This is the last of a five-part series, and I hope you liked it. If you did, please click the like button for this episode to all the people on your contact list and social media friends, and comment in the space below. I would love to hear your feedback. Signing off, tune in next time. Bye for now.